In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. You are listening to Daily Bread Devotions with Father Eustace Yame, a Salesian of Don Bosco. Your word, Lord, is a lamp for my steps. Stay tuned. It is Wednesday, the 31st of July, 2024, 17th week in Ordinary Time. And today, we keep the memorial of St. Ignatius of Loyola, which for our Jesuits is a solemnity because this is the feast of their founder, born in 1491 and died in 1556. He was a soldier but was wounded in the Battle of Pamplona against the French at the age of 30. During a long convalence, he read A Life of Christ and a collection of lives of the saints and discovered that his true vocation was to devote his life wholly to God. That's why most of the time you find me now and then reading the lives of saints because when you read the lives of saints, you are inspired to become like them. Men and women, our ancestors in faith, who have lived a very holy life. And you are able to say holiness is possible. He was as systematic about this as he had been about his military career. He spent a year's retreat in a Dominican friary made a pilgrimage to Jerusalem, and then set about learning Latin. Such enthusiasm in a layman caused grave suspicion in the Spanish authorities, and he was questioned and imprisoned more than once. He moved to Paris in 1528 and continued his studies. And then, in 1534, Ignatius, and six companions bound themselves to become missionaries to the Muslims in Palestine. By the time they were ready to set out, war made the journey impossible. And so the group, now numbering ten, offered their services to the Pope in any capacity he might choose. A number of them were duly ordained and they were all assigned to various tasks. Soon it was proposed that they should organize themselves into a regular religious order. And in 1540, the Society of Jesus, the Jesuits, was formed. Ignatius was the first superior general until his death. Soon after their foundation, the Jesuits began to meet the challenge of the Reformation, a tough task given the debilitated state into which the church had fallen but one which, as Ignatius said, had to be undertaken without hard words or contempt for people's errors. Ignatius had a gift for inspiring friendship and was the recipient of deep spiritual insight. Soon after his conversion, Ignatius wrote the spiritual exercises, a systematic step-by-step -step retreat that can be followed by anyone and has been followed by many not all of them Catholics ever since. We pray for our Jesuits all over the world. And for your information, Pope Francis is one of them. And as at January 1st, 2022, we had 14,439 Jesuits in the world broken down into 583 novices, 2,587 scholastics, meaning those who are preparing themselves to become ordained as priests, and 10,432 priests. I know by now, maybe the number has increased slightly. The Jesuits have been the biggest congregation in the world, followed by the Salesians, but as we see, Salesians are increasing in number and they are becoming the biggest congregation in the world. 
We pray for them, also for the increase in vocations as they continue defending the faith of the church in their commitment and in following St. Ignatius of Loyola who gave up everything to do something for God in his life. Participating in the proclamation of the word of God for today are the following daily bread members. Rosmaro Nanchengwa, celebrating her birthday today from Lusaka, Zambia, takes for us the first reading. Dr. Stephen and Elizabeth Danua, celebrating their 25th wedding anniversary today from Lagos, Nigeria, take for us the responsorial psalm. And proclaiming the gospel is Father Joseph Ogwa, who celebrated his birthday on the 23rd of this month, working in Lira Diocese in Uganda. Let us pray. O oh God, who raised up St. Ignatius of Loyola in your church to further the greater glory of your name, grant that by his help we may imitate him in fighting the good fight on earth and merit to receive with him a crown in heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. First reading. Why is my pain unceasing? If you return, you shall stand before me. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 10, 16 to 21. Woe is me, my mother, that you bore me, a man of strife and contention to the whole land. I have not lent, nor have I borrowed. Yet all of them curse me. Your words were found, and I ate them, and your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord, God of hosts. I did not sit in the company of merrymakers, nor did I rejoice. I sat alone, because your hand was upon me, for you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing? My wound incurable, refusing to be healed. Will you be to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fell? Therefore, that says the Lord, if you return, I will restore you, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall be as my mouth. They shall turn to you, but you shall not turn to them. And I will make you to these people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you. For I am with you to save you and deliver you, says the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless, the wage of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm, Psalm 59, verse 2 to 3, 4, 10 to 11, 17, and 18. Response is taken from Psalm 59, verse 17, D. And the response is, God is my refuge in the day of my distress. God is my refuge in the day of my distress. Rescue me from my foes, O God. Protect me from those who attack me. O rescue me from those who do evil and save me from bloodthirsty men. God is my refuge in the day of my distress. They lie in wait for my life. The strong band together against me, for no offense, no sin of mine, O Lord. God is my refuge in the day of my distress. O my strength, for you will I watch. For you, O God, are my stronghold, the God who shows me merciful love. Now God will proceed before me. 
God would let me look upon my foes. God is my refuge in the day of my distress. As for me, I will sing of your strength and acclaim your mercy in the morning. For you have been my stronghold, a refuge in the day of my distress. God is my refuge in the day of my distress. O oh, my strength, to you I will sing praise. For you, O oh God, are my stronghold, the God who shows me merciful love. God is my refuge in the day of my distress. Gospel Acclamation John chapter 15, verse 15b. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. I have called you friends, says the Lord, for all that I have heard from my Father. I have made known to you. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Matthew chapter 13, verses 44 to 46. At that time, Jesus said to the crowds, The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and covered up. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls, who, on finding one pearl of great value, went and sold all that he had and bought it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. At one point, Jeremiah became discouraged because he faced a lot of attacks in such a way that he felt he was laboring in vain. He felt like God had abandoned him, the God who had promised him at the beginning of his call that he was going to tear down and raise kingdoms. He had that enthusiasm at the beginning and that enthusiasm slowly started dying out. Remember, this is the experience of every prophet. And if you, as a minister of God's word, do not have such an experience, then you know that there is something wrong. You must have a moment where you think you are laboring alone. And those moments I have experienced in my life, and those moments every genuine person who has committed himself to God, to doing the work of God, will recall having experienced such. Jeremiah is at the point of wanting to give up. He realizes that people are even ridiculing him. They have even nicknamed him. They are saying all sorts of terrible things about him, against him, and he wants to give up. But then he turns to God. That's one thing that I like about Jeremiah. And that's what makes me go back to the book of Jeremiah. He turns to God and remembers the words of God. He says, God will make you a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you. For I am with you to save you and deliver you, says the Lord. This gave him strength to continue. And I want to tell you, my brother, having been called names by people because of the situation you find yourself in, and you want to give up on that situation, you want to give up on the life you are leading today, please don't. Don't give up. 
God is saying, I will make you a fortified wall of bronze. It is a wall that people will try to break into and they will not manage because you cannot break the wall of bronze. And no matter how much people may try to destroy you, they are not going to manage. You are under the full protection of God. Feel it that way and believe it. And I'm telling you, no witch, no wizard is going to destroy that for which you have stood, that which is making you look forward to every rising sun. Because you know God is with you. He's going to take care of that marriage. He's going to protect that marriage. He's going to protect that religious life. You are leading as a sister, as a nun in that community, despite the challenges that you are facing in that community. Understand this. You have no reason to give up because it is not a human being who called you. You were called by God and God who called you will make you a fortified wall of bronze that at the end you must say with St. Paul, I have fought a good fight. I have finished the rest. Now I await that crown promised by God for those who trust in his name. The gospel passage of today tells us of the kingdom as a treasure that is hidden and once you find it you are just going to give up everything you will throw away everything you keep it and you go and buy that field it's a hidden treasure that should not be thrown away and again he says it is something that requires you to search for you need a bit of effort. Don't just lie down and wait for it. No, you need to wake up in the morning and pray for it. You need to act. You need to involve yourself. These are the two aspects of this parable. That it is both a gift and something that we labor for. There is no way you are going to perfect your Christian commitment if you are not laboring for your own salvation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed Wednesday to you, and happy Feast of St. Ignatius of Loyola. Thanks be to God.